from the vast and mysterious reaches of the universe. The most daring and brave star beings choose Earth, this vibrant and challenging planet, as their proving ground, determined to face the most arduous and daunting paths. These bold souls are irresistibly drawn to experiences most would shun, places where life's challenges are not merely complicated, but relentlessly brutal. Their purpose transcends the mundane. They seek spiritual expansion, the drive to explore the limits of their being, spreading their wings in a courageous flight into the unknown. It is not predetermined in the stars, but it is a common choice among these intrepid spirits to dive into lives marked by simplicity, facing devastating social adversities that act as true catalysts for deep and transformative spiritual growth. In their journey, they venture to live in the deepest shadows of human experience, and through these trials, seek to ignite the divine spark of light and wisdom, illuminating not just their own souls, but also the fabric of our shared reality. In this world, they confront a harsh and ruthless reality, feeling firsthand the anguish of not knowing their true selves, while society attempts to crush their spirits with dogmas and doctrines, stripping them of their innate power. They are made to believe they are merely accidents of evolution, mere products of a Darwinian process, a theory that serves only to mask an existence riddled with falsehoods. Star seeds are, indeed, the most fearless and resolute warriors. Fearlessly, they plunge blindly into this world, facing egregores of evil at every level to restore balance. Though they may appear fragile and delicate on the physical plane, in the spiritual realm, they emerge as formidable warriors of light, confronting the darkest nightmares and demonstrating the true essence of existence on Earth. It is understandable that a starseed might consider as pure fantasy or science fiction the revelations about their cosmic origin, having been conditioned to believe in their insignificance in this world. Discovering that they are regarded among the most brave and capable beings for their choice to descend to this planet is an overwhelming contrast. Every step they take is fraught with snares designed to challenge their existence. These brave souls, facing such adversities, seek not only their own truth, but also remind us of the strength and light that we all carry within. Before we dive into the captivating details of this story, it's important to note that the information we're about to share does not come from the beloved Tigatine and Swarunian teams. However, we approach this narrative with a spirit of deep respect and admiration, inspired by their dedication and clarity, which have illuminated their work. This approach guides us as we explore cosmic themes with seriousness and appreciation recognizing their valuable contributions to our understanding of realities beyond our planet. Today, we'll share the real and deeply personal facts of a human who lived in the shadow of oblivion, unaware of their true identity, until they discovered their essence as an Antarian starseed, and finally made contact with their celestial family. This story takes us through the journey of an Antarian starseed, who chose to experience human life for spiritual expansion and other significant missions for their race. Our protagonist, born in a male body but choosing, through the enigmas of immersion technology to live in a female human body on Earth, made this choice to intensify her spiritual, feminine energy among other noble purposes. For reasons of discretion, at the author's request, we will call this being Lucia. Lucia, a starseed, 
always felt a deep inner certainty that she did not belong to this world, a feeling that intensified with her painful exodus from Venezuela, her beloved homeland, fleeing a severe political and social crisis. Her search for refuge first took her to Brazil, and then to Argentina, where she experienced mysterious events she chose to keep secret. Over the years, Lucia discovered inexplicable marks on her body, signs of abductions that she eventually understood as part of a phenomenon that transcends our mundane comprehension. These scars became a map to understanding her true origin and purpose. Deeply moved by Tigatine and Swarunian teachings, Lucia applied these teachings to raise her frequency, finally allowing her to reconnect with her star family and fulfill her dream of returning to her cosmic roots. This narrative transcends the framework of a mere extraterrestrial encounter. It is the deeply personal chronicle of a woman linked to the distant star of Antares in the constellation of Scorpio. Here she shares with us not only fragments of her intimate conversations, but also the unique experiences she has lived alongside her star family. It is crucial to understand that the Antarian beings mentioned in this story express themselves in their own terms and from their individual perspectives. They do not claim to speak for their entire race, but offer their personal experiences as a valuable and unique contribution providing us a window into a complex and nuanced reality for those already familiar with the narratives of the Tigatine and Swarunian teams. You will find interesting parallels in Lucia's descriptions of how other star races perceive and handle their reality in interaction with the Earth-involved Federation. We invite the audience to discern and evaluate how these stories align or diverge from their own understanding of the cosmos. The alignment between Lucia's stories and the ongoing Tigatian and Swarunian narratives about the star reality, also known as 5D, inspired us to share her story, thus offering a new perspective within the vast tapestry of our universe. Through Lucia's eyes, we will embark on a fascinating journey through the 5D reality, a dimension described by the Tigatine and Swarunian races for years opening a window to the unknown and the absolutely wonderful. Argentina, Buenos Aires, October 2023. It is an immense privilege for me to be here and to have the opportunity to establish this connection with you. My name is Kananiel, originating from the constellation of Scorpio, from the star Antares, belonging to the Antarian race. Our star, Antares, located about 550 light-years from your planet, shines in the cosmos as a red supergiant, one of the most vast and luminous stars that adorn the sky, visible to the naked eye from Earth. In the cosmic fabric of star civilizations, we could consider ourselves, in a way, as the younger siblings of the advanced Tigatine race, 
Compatibility, 95 out of 100 with them. Who am I? The team leader, assigned to the being who entered immersion. There are no commanders or leaders here, as we are all equals. However, at the request of the being I am currently communicating with, that is, you. You formed a team of seven people, which I am in charge of. You left specific instructions for us to take care of your body while you are on Earth. It is I who, in some way, have the most comprehensive overview of what you have decided to undertake on Earth. Hello, Kananael. Thank you for being here. I have eagerly awaited this moment, dreaming of the possibility of communicating with you. Now that I finally have the chance, I feel an emptiness inside me, as if pieces of a puzzle are missing that only you can help me complete. My first big question is, who am I really? Please, could you reveal my stellar name? Regardless of the situation you're facing right now, it doesn't change who you are or who you will be. Enjoy the adventure you're living on Earth. This was at your request before you came in. Your name is Rahel. Who are you? First, you must understand many things. We do not dedicate ourselves to a single activity here. We perform multiple tasks, although we specialize in some specific ones. To begin, you should know that our culture is deeply linked with technology, which constitutes one of our great passions. We study technology in all its aspects, both at the interstellar level and in daily applications, using devices that facilitate our existence on this planet. But that's not all. We also explore fields like medicine, the arts, literature, and everything related to the stellar, including astronomy and astrology. Indeed, what we do cannot be encapsulated within a conventional human science, but it could be described as a fusion of magic with technology. This combination is also heavily used by another stellar race called Engen, which still preserves ancient writings where they use magic all races share information, depending on what each one wishes to share. Obviously, we adapt what we learn to our civilization and create something similar, though not identical. So, what does all this have to do with you? Precisely, it is the reason why you came to Earth. To learn to do things differently. Sometimes, when star beings are immersed in their experiences, they believe they have come to perform extraordinary feats, like fighting dragons or decapitating giant snakes. And in fact, they do so as well. However, there are simple and everyday aspects that contribute to the expansion of our consciousness, such as facing daily challenges that seem illogical. For example, being in line somewhere and thinking that by just imagining it, everyone would disappear. These are precisely the things you have come to control and manage. Why and for what? It is necessary when someone is going to assume a leadership role or an important position. Although, as I said, we do not have leaders as such. We are guides of a team. So, in essence, you have come to learn you have also come to discover personal aspects. There are things that you yourself have left unresolved here, so I cannot exactly share what they are, unfortunately. Despite everything, there are secrets and truths that are within my power to reveal to you, all intimately intertwined with exopolitics. Among the members of our race, some choose voluntarily to undergo rigorous education. This sacrifice is not minor. It is an act of bravery and commitment, as its purpose is to prepare for exchange with another race. Imagine learning new languages and immersing completely in unknown cultures. 
This decision not only shows the capacity for adaptation, but also the deep desire to understand and connect on a level that transcends our own experiences. It is, undoubtedly, a powerful manifestation of your abilities and your spirit. That is, I could include the term politics within what defines you, always using colloquial language. I am deeply moved by all the information you have revealed to me, Kananael. My heart is filled with emotions. Thank you. Where is my original body? As I mentioned, you planned your arrival on Earth. In fact, here's the key point. I know you remember some things about having been on a ship. You agreed to enter Earth using immersion technology while on a ship orbiting Earth. However, for the safety of the bodies in immersion, the ship was removed from orbit, and the bodies were moved to Antares some time ago. All the Antarian beings who entered immersion or suspended animation in that reality were transferred for safety reasons from our ships. Since I was a child, I have grown accustomed to waking up with marks and bruises on various parts of my body without any prior accident to justify these marks. After investigating, I realized that they were due to abductions. Why do I have so many abductions here? Due to the place where you currently reside, we need to adapt the frequency of the physical body to the consciousness. These abductions were also planned by you. In case you deviate from the original plan you set, because you develop a plan A, plan B, plan C, etc. Everything is adjusted according to the plan you are active in at that moment. Each plan could be called a timeline. Therefore, everything is calculated so that you receive help exactly when your body needs it. Why? The body and consciousness are closely connected. If your physical body suffers any damage, your consciousness will also be affected. Additionally, the place where you are living is constantly exposed to ionizing radiation. To help the body maintain consciousness, abductions are necessary. Constant updates are made to the human body or avatar to ensure its optimal functioning, as consciousness plays a crucial role in the location where it is. You should know that the human body is like an antenna, and this antenna is emitting a vibrational frequency. This vibrational frequency is your personal frequency, and the frequency you emit extend several kilometers around. The more aware you are of who you are and what you do, the broader the frequency you emit, and the more you influence the people around you. But here lies your true challenge. The place where you are is your trial by fire. The society you are immersed in operates at a very low frequency. Therefore, you are swimming against the current while simultaneously acting as the antenna. That is why abductions are necessary, to have an avatar in optimal condition, in accordance with the purposes you have decided for yourself. Do you mean that I currently have some sort of chip or something similar in this body? Yes, tracking technology is installed to know where the avatar is located. However, there are no other chips that could harm your biology as the implanted chip is biological and may manifest as a bump, perhaps similar to a callus on some part of the body. 
Can you describe what my Ontarian physical body looks like? Before describing our appearance, I want to fondly remind you that our race is an extension of the Tiger Teens. As I mentioned before, we were seeded as a result of the explorations of the Tiger Teen race, whom we consider our mother race. Our physical constitution adapted to the conditions of the planet we call Antares, just like our sun. Unlike the Tiger Teens, we are of medium build, with well-defined muscles due to our passion for physical exercise. We particularly enjoy mountain climbing, among other activities. Our hair is usually dark, and our eyes are light. I know that for some humans, the consumption of animals might be controversial, due to misconceptions about stellar races. But in our case, it depends on the specific needs of each body. Our society evolved in a way that understood we also needed to consume certain types of fish and vegetables. Similar to the Umite race, thus adapting to the conditions of Antares and enhancing our physical resilience compared to other Lyrian Pleiadian races. We are not as tall as the strictly vegan men of Taigeta. nor as muscular as the small but robust Engen. Furthermore, our differences with the Tiger Teens also extend to the spiritual realm. We are more focused on experiencing the here and now, while they seek to connect with other realities. This led them to develop the Immersion Chamber, with the intention of connecting with higher frequencies. Among like-minded races, we often share technologies it was then that they discovered the gateway to Earth using this technology, without the need to die as a stellar being on Earth, which resolved a great conflict. Being a stellar being and entering Earth, it is common to reincarnate due to a frequency disparity, becoming trapped on that planet. The immersion technology offers us the opportunity to navigate Earth safely, preventing us from getting lost in it. As for you, your features are balanced with an oval-shaped face and dense, dark eyebrows. Your eyes, a bluish-gray, could be compared to that hybrid shade between blue and gray, reminiscent of a cat's eyes. Your eyelashes are long and expressive. Your lips are proportionate, with the lower lip slightly fuller than the upper, and your nose is delicate, harmonizing perfectly with the rest of your features. Your ears, slightly projected forward, have a piercing in your right ear, meaning you wore an earring before entering immersion. Additionally, you have a scar on your right hand, an indelible reminder of your training in the immersion capsule. Do you know where that scar comes from? You got it while training in an immersion capsule. Let me explain. We have capsules or spaces where we perform simulations indistinguishable from reality. We enter them and experiment with an alternate reality. It's similar to what you are experiencing now on Earth, but without leaving home. You choose the game and simply enter this reality. You are always aware of who you are and what you are doing. At that time, you were fighting a dragon. You decided to keep the scar as proof of your grand feat. You know we are warriors. Although to some this story may seem like a simple tale of science fiction, and they have every right to think so, for Lucia it represents her deepest truth the reality she has consciously chosen to create and live. Lucia shares her experience not with the intention of convincing anyone, but to offer her story to those souls ready to hear it. It is not about blind belief, but about each individual finding the pieces of their own puzzle and fitting them into their personal reality. 
After this revelatory communication, Lucia began to experience extraordinary events. Sightings of Antarian drones soaring through the sky, and direct telepathic communication with her star family. These manifestations undeniably confirmed the truth and authenticity of the information received, immersing her in a universe of cosmic wonders. But surely you may wonder, how did this communication between Lucia and her Antarian star family come about? The answer lies in the figure of Yared Sasakahana, a Tigatine star seed that shines from Mexico. This extraordinary shaman, channeler, and medium emerges from an ancestral Mexican shamanic lineage, inheriting deep and mystical wisdom. Since childhood, Yarid has been guided by the invisible hands of her ancestors, forging a unique and transcendental spiritual path. Her distinctive and magical education prepared her to develop her exceptional gifts, connecting her with beings of high frequencies that surpass us and envelop us in a cosmic embrace. Her ability and connection have allowed this communication, so clear and convincing, to materialize before us, unveiling the mysteries of the universe. Yered, with her divine essence, transports us to dimensions beyond our understanding, revealing that many star races are already in contact with us, communicating through her star family. We express our deepest gratitude to Yared Sasakahana for being the luminous bridge that unites our world with the unknown. This concludes the first part to keep the video light and digestible. In our next meeting, we will continue unveiling how Lucia experienced sightings of Antarian drones, and how she maintained telepathic communication with her Antarian star family. Don't miss it. Thank you for dedicating your time to our video and immersing yourself with us in the fascinating universe of life beyond our planet. If you wish to continue exploring this exciting subject and receive more information, I invite you to subscribe to our channel. By doing so, you will have access to exclusive content, thrilling discoveries, captivating stories, and ever-expanding knowledge about extraterrestrial life. We want to further broaden your horizon with a selection of pioneering channels, true sources of inspiration behind our effort to enlighten you about these extraordinary beings. We urge you to explore the depths of the official channels of Swaru, Official, Aryan, and Zael Cosmic Agency, and Despejando Enigmas. These platforms provide you with access to a treasure trove of enriching perspectives and a full spectrum of data about life outside our world. Let their content envelop you and transport you to the wonder of discovering the marvels that inhabit the cosmos. Join us on this exciting journey of knowledge. Let's continue exploring together the wonders that await us beyond the stars. Don't miss our next adventure. Subscribe now to join this amazing community of universe explorers. See you next time.